Today I'm going to show you how to recreate a fun and stunning design inside of Canva. We'll learn a couple tricks along the way and hopefully you'll be inspired to use this design for yourself or for your clients. The design we're going to create is this fun idea where the object or person is jumping through a series of letters creating a really interesting visual that you could use in many different contexts, again for yourself or for your clients. Let's get started. So before we begin, I'd like to give a shout out to the inspiration for this. I came across this on Twitter and found it on Instagram. This is from a design firm, I believe, called Coda Technology. Uh, this fantastic image here where the person's jumping through the letter pixel. I thought that was just an awesome idea and I wanted to see how I could recreate it. So first I want to give a nod to the inspiration Coda Technology. Really fun, really interesting stuff. It's a really striking type of image and you can see lots of applications. The wording you use around it, the object itself, it could be a piece of food, it could be an animal. So many ways to do it and the actual tech um, technique to make it happen is fairly simple which makes it all a much more fun. So let's get started here. So right off the bat we start with a photo. Now the doesn't have to necessarily be on a blank background as you see this one but generally we just want something where our software is going to be able to remove the background for us. Now that is one of the first key parts of this is that we're going to remove the background from this image. If you have Canva Pro it's built in if you don't have Canva Pro though, um, I suggest you take a look at this video I just released. It's a free hack that you can use with a couple of pieces of software so you can for free remove the background. The image here is using that exact same technique. So if you don't have Canva Pro and you want to do it for free to follow along, just check out this video of how to remove the background from an image for free. But back into this here. So the first step of this design is to find an image where someone is jumping or there's a motion there is a good object and ideally if there's a bit of outreach as far as this guy has his limbs kind of nicely out because what we're hoping to do is have it intersect with the various letters if it if it's very tight and there's nothing kind of going out from the center there it'd really only be behind one object which kind of defeat defies a purpose of what we're doing so find a good example of a photo for that. In my case here, I just searched for jump inside of the Canva app. But with that onto the main stage, I'm going to select it. Because I have Canva Pro, I'll go to effects and I'll go to background remover. And again, uh, you can either use other software you found. You can follow the hack that I found if you find another video and have this exact same idea. The main purpose here though is to get an image of the object you want to jump through the letters with no background. And here we have here. Now quick trick uh, tip at least for this when you do remove it often you'll have a lot of extra space around it which if you bring it into the corners cam is going to try to suck it into the background as the background image. So I suggest as soon as you have it grab the select the image and on the blue grab the kind of square tabs here and bring it in as close as you can. So you're basically going to crop that image just so it's going to be a little bit easier to work with when we have all the other things on our canvas. So we'll bring it in, bring it in. There we go. And that's also going to prevent Canva generally from trying to take our image and suck it into the background. Now, great part here, let's go ahead and add any color. You can choose your brand's color. You can um, you know, choose a color from the image itself. Anything like, let's start with a blue my uh, just enough design blue. Now we have them in the center. So the next key is to get text that we're going to have to go around. Generally speaking, block your text is going to work a little bit better, but you can definitely experiment with some script type and anything else. Once you have the basics in place, you'll be able to see where it goes. Um, for our purposes, I'm going to click text. Let's go ahead and add in a heading and let's type it in. Again, I'm going to be going with, I'm, going to, I'm trying to opt for larger, bulkier, kind of blockier text so I can have the best effect against it. Uh, again, though, you're free to experiment, do script text, do thin text, see what you like for your particular design. So we're going to want to place it around there. We're not worrying about the um, effect just yet as far as his placement against it. So we're going to have that about in the center. Let's see where our happy jumping man is. Kind of just setting up where he's going to be and we'll put the letters around it. 
Okay, so we got those three there. That's looking about right. I think that's good for us. A quick trick for the text itself, and even just colors generally for design. This is a flat black, as in it is all zeros, right? So this is just an absolute black. It's very flat and kind of in many ways almost kills the design. It, it lacks a certain depth to it. A trick I like to use for choosing a darker color within a design, especially when there's one big prominent color like this, I really like to take so that it all fits together. I'll take that color. So select the text you want to go. Select the color from the main background. It kind of seems like it disappears. And actually, accidentally, that is actually a kind of cool effect as well as far as a cutout of the person, but another design video. So select the main color, and then in, in Canvas case, go into this color selector, which it'll start from what, what color you have selected, and then make it darker. So all the way down is just black, and again, that's the flat, uh, almost kind of color-killing version of it. But if you bring it up a little bit, so again, what we did is like we chose what we want, we chose the background color, and then we're going to go into the color selector and basically just move down. What that does is it keeps it in the same color family. It's basically as if you're taking that background color and you're just adding black to it. You can get super dark, but it keeps that little tint of blue, which helps really tie it together. So as opposed to just having blue and then black detached, it's blue and then a super dark version of that blue. And it makes the two of them feel like they're together. So small tip there on choosing how to choose a dark color to go with your other main color. So I like how that one looks there. So that, so now we start with the placement of it. To get the various layers, all we're going to do is cut up basically this text and then play around with positioning so that some layers are on behind it and some layers are in front. So to do so, all I'm going to do is select it, control C to copy it, and now I'm going to remove everything except that A. Don't worry too much about if things kind of get out of placement just yet, because we'll be able to arrange everything at the end. So I've removed everything except the A, and now I'm going to press Control V to paste. Now I'm going to remove everything except for just the beginning, the ST. Kind of place it as we like. I'll go ahead and hit paste again of that same uh, first thing I copied. Then we'll select the RT and bring that over to the right side. Great. Now here's where the fun comes. So we're going to want to select our A, right? Because those these three sets of letters are all in different la layers. And same with this guy here, we can move them all around. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this A to the front because we want him to stay in front of it. And we're going to move him as well. So he'll be in front of these two other layers. Select the two of them, come up to position, to front. And there we have it. All of a sudden he's as if the A is closer to it and he is breaking right through it, between it. Now from here, you can, everything, because everything is now its own independent object, you have total freedom to move things around. If you want to see what it's like, you know, if you want him to be a little bit bigger, you know, so he covers kind of more of the design. What I really suggest is you want to avoid what I, what I like to say accidental um, intersection. So if you notice this T, and then his right side, we could have it so he interrupts it like just barely. But now that kind of seems like an accident as opposed to a purposeful design. If you're going to have something like that, generally, try to make it significant enough to matter. So it looks like it's on purpose. It looks like it's part of your design, part of your idea. Same thing with, check out this shin here. Same idea there, right? Because if we just have it perfectly touch, it almost feels like an accident. So we're gonna make sure it's kind of placed very purposefully, so things are intersecting noticeably and with enough purpose to be meaningful. So let's maybe make him a bit smaller, because so I want him to, I want his knee on the R and I want his kind of arm to hit the T. While avoiding the accidental intersections that I just mentioned myself. And there we have it, jumping right through. And then from here, as I said, I'd found this kind of fun, kind of 80s large text here from for the previous design. Let me just go ahead and ungroup it, delete that. As opposed to stay, let's go with uh, just, as in just start. 
And there we have it. You can see where I ended up with this placement as opposed to the first version that we first started in on. Looks like we had the hem a lot larger and the text a little bit smaller. So different variations of it, very much different um, impressions that we get. You know, I will say I kind of like that better. So I'm going to go ahead and just select the text pieces and move that down so it's kind of his knees doing all the work. Let's adjust that down. What's fun too is like by the time when you get to this phase, now we just get to play around. You know, what is your preferred your preferreds have a design language. And there we have it. So simply enough, all we had to do was remove the background from an image, take it and place it about the middle, type out a word that we want to break up and then break that up further into three parts. Have the middle and your object come to the front and then arrange it all to have it seem like the object is breaking right through the word. It's a really effective design idea in that you could place it into social media posts, presentations, anywhere. And it just creates a visual interest. It stops the user to think, how did this happen? That's a bit out of the ordinary. Very interesting. Very cool. I hope that works and hope it gives you a little bit of inspiration for your own design and cheers to your great looking work.